if you could just, yeah. <laughs> Don't stop filming. Hi guys, my name's Nick, and it's been like nine months, um, and now I have a collared shirt, and my hair was cut at least once during those nine months, and that's pretty much all that happened here. So, <laughs> on the bright side though, now we're filming in 1080p 60fps. So, yeah, now we just need to bring the quality of our videos up to the quality of our camera, and we're going to have a great channel. So, yeah, stay tuned for that awesome stuff. Anyways, um, as exciting as I am, I brought the AMD A8 6600K. <clears throat> I'm getting too excited. This is the A8 6600K. It is a quad-core APU from, <clears throat> spoiler alert, AMD, and it's a pretty good chip for a real great price and an awesome choice for anybody looking to replace their game console and get into some really good PC gaming because this has a killer graphics chip in it. So without further ado, yeah, let's zoom in on the chip and slice it open with my stand-in stabber and yeah, come to me cameraman, come, come to me. Come to me, come! Get off the stool. I'm glad you're having fun. <laughs> All right, so bringing the quality of our videos up to the quality of the camera means that we will never use digital zoom, never. <laughs> and the cameraman will get off the stool when ordered. So, anyways, this is, I have smacked this chip down on the table like five times in this video and I've hit it with a knife. Don't do that. It's bad. Um, you know, you're probably not going to hurt it. Uh, there's no real moving parts in there except for the fan. That's a pretty big moving part in it. Never mind. Never mind. Okay, over here. Quality of the videos going up. <clears throat> Craziness going <laughs> up. This is a nice close up of the AMD A8 6600K. It's a quad core processor, as the sticker tells us, and it's clocked at 3.9 gigahertz, and the chip itself will turbo up to 4.2 without any overclocking. Um, obviously, we can go in there and overclock the snot out of it if we so choose, because it is a K-series chip, um, which means that the multiplier is unlocked. Um, same, I'm saying um a lot. Uh, <laughs> So the multiplier is unlocked, same meaning as the Intel chips, unlock multiplier, great for overclocking, ready to go. So uh, this particular, I gotta stop saying, um, 4.9 gigahertz quad core chip comes with a four megabyte level two cache, and that's on the 32 nanometer manufacturing process, and I don't think many people care about it. Of course, it's a 64 bit chip, and it is compatible with the DDR3 memory, and inside of this beauty, we would find an AMD Radeon HD 8570D, which is the integrated GPU. And that's essentially what AMD means by APU. There you have a multi-core CPU technology, quad-core, plus discrete GPU technology. So it's got integrated graphics. They're branding it as an APU processor with integrated graphics. That's what we're really talking about. Now the HD 8570D is actually a very exceptional chip as far as integrated graphics go. There's a lot of horsepower under this hood and if you don't have a lot of money, if you don't have a huge budget for like a gaming machine or you're looking to replace your console, I would highly recommend this chip. I think it's like 80 bucks on Newegg. Great deal for a processor and GPU. Um, obviously a dedicated GPU has a lot of advantages, um, and you can add one. And that's right here, the dual graphics technology. I talked about it in my last video and accidentally called it Crossfire. There is a difference. AMD dual graphics technology basically lets you run your integrated GPU in Crossfire, kind of, sort of, like that, with a dedicated GPU, and they list off the GPUs that are recommended for optimal performance. Um, for the A8 series, they recommend the HD 6670 and the 6570. Those are pretty dated. So, what I'm going to do later is test this chip and see if we can put it into dual graphics mode with the uh, R9 290, which is one of their flagship cards, and this thing that I just grabbed. <laughs> which one is it? This is a 6870. So, we will try to 
take a crack at the dual graphics with a HD 6670 and an R9 and see if it works and if it works well. And yeah, more, more on dual graphics to come later in the video. But uh, yeah, I think I've said pretty much everything that I can say about it. Multi-monitor support um, on that GPU. And it runs on the FM2 socket. It's also compatible with the FM2 Plus socket. However, chips that are marketed for the FM2 Plus socket may not necessarily be backwards compatible or are not necessarily backwards compatible with FM2. There's some additional circuitry. Anyways, yeah. <coughs> the seal. Oh, this is broken. Oh. Mm. Whoa. <laughs> this is a 100 watt TDP, by the way. So the chip puts out quite a bit of heat, and there it is in its glorious nakedness. No, cameraman, no. No! We'll look at the boring stuff first, yeah. Here's the box. Um, the inside of the box is just a boring... Okay, sorry. <laughs> you get the instructions with it, which... Yeah! Goes over how to install the APU and things like that. I do have a video. I have an APU installation guide, and I will link it in the video description. And stuff like that. Here is the included heatsink and fan assembly. You get a nice four pin PWM fan. <laughs> By nice I mean super cheap. And a very small heatsink with some pre-applied thermal paste so you don't have to worry about applying your own thermal paste with this solution. And <clears throat> quite frankly the integrated cooling system is good enough if you're not going to be doing any overclocking. Um, if you have a decently well ventilated case in the real world, real world loads, your chip's gonna be fine. Is it good to add an aftermarket cooling system? Yes, you can get them for like $20 on up and they make the chip run significantly cooler. Cooler chips are more stable. You can overclock them more and they last longer. So there's a lot of good benefits associated with a custom cooler, including these little fans. This 80 millimeter fan right here can get pretty loud um, when you're gaming. And so a custom cooler will be a lot quieter. Here's the most important part. This is the sticker, and we've already seen the sticker before in the A, uh, yeah, the A6 that I unboxed. And it's still an excellent sticker, very shiny and glossy and fabulous. So this, this definitely gets the sticking of approval. Loving that sticker. <clears throat> I'm gonna put that right there so everybody can see the sticker in the background. While we go ahead and look at the chip. There's really not much to look at. Um, be careful with it. We do not want to bend the pins. And as a side note, I think I've sort of harped on this before, but you want to be electrically grounded when you're handling stuff like this because you don't want to hit it with an electrostatic discharge in front of the chip. So a uh, wrist strap either on your wrist or you can put it on your ankle. Um, you can get more creative, but <clears throat> anyways, you have a dirty mind, get it out of the gutter. AMD A6 6600 series tells us all the good stuff, all the uh, particular numbers. Here we see that it's copyrighted 2011 by AMD. So this particular architecture has been along, around for a little bit. Still diffused in Germany, still made in China. And it's got a nice beefy heat spreader on it because these chips do tend to put out more heat than their Intel counterparts. They're sort of less efficient, right, than the i5s and the i7s of the world. But the horsepower is there for a great price, which is why I really love AMD APUs. And on the back we can see that it uses the pin grid array instead of the land grid array that we are so familiar with with Intel processors. By the way, that's, that's the LGA socket like LGA 2011 land grid array which means that they don't have the pins instead they have pads fun fact of the night or day depending on where you are in the world and what time you're watching my video and stuff like that it's our video guys let's share it with <laughs> wow <laughs> anyways Ooh. yeah don't don't flop it around like that that's bad <clears throat> anyhow without further ado I'm going to get this into a test system and we'll have a look at the dual graphics and some other stuff.
Jumping into Assassin's Creed 3, you can see my test system specs on the screen. That's AMD's new Omega Driver 14.12, which is the latest at the time of filming. Windows 7 64 bit, 4 gigs of RAM at 1600 megahertz. Moving on to frame rates, you can see the APU did struggle a bit. Frame rates averaged only 13 FPS and dropped down to 10 sometimes. Overclocking to 4.7 gigahertz, the APU still struggles, but the frame rate did go as high as 22 FPS at times. An R9 290, of course, is going to do much better. In this case, it averages 35 FPS on its own, but it didn't really do any better in dual graphics mode with the APU. Sometimes the frame rate actually dropped. I'm not sure if that's a bug in dual graphics, or maybe the R9 290 is just being choked. The benchmarks uh, are running on all the lowest graphical settings and are focused on combat gameplay, as you can see here. Overall, the game was much smoother and enjoyable with that $400 discrete graphics card, of course, but the APU did rise to the task, in my opinion, and the game was still very playable on the HD 8570D integrated graphics, even at stock speeds. I didn't notice any huge drops in frame rates when jumping into combat or anything else that would make the game unplayable, in my opinion. I had a very good experience, very... Uh, a very capable experience slaughtering red coats and moving around the world and things like that. So, we'll just kill him and then jump right into my awesome Jeep in Far Cry 3. You'll see the same system specs on your screen here, and just in case you forgot in the last five seconds. And we're running Far Cry 3 in all the lowest graphical settings, also. And the game was actually more playable than Assassin's Creed, in my opinion. It, it displayed significantly less bugs when running in dual graphics mode as well. Frame rates are still low on the APU, averaging 13 FPS and 15 when we overclocked it. Frame rates did drop to around 10 sometimes. The R9 290 is going to tell a different story. And there she is. You can see that the frame rates went up significantly, and we did benefit a lot from dual graphics mode, and we enjoyed those fewer bugs. The game was very playable to me, and you'll see that here. Uh, I had no problem slaughtering the bad guys, and considering that this is an $80 quad-core processor with an integrated GPU, you're going to have a lot of fun. So, hmm, I'm thinking grenade. Okay, those are the numbers, and earlier in the video I called this a killer graphics chip, the 8570D, and then I showed you 10 FPS, 12 FPS, 15 FPS numbers, and I think by a lot of people's standards, that's not at all anywhere close to killer. However, this is an $80 chip, and it's not just a graphics chip, you're getting a quad-core processor with this. $80 for a CPU and a GPU is an amazing deal. Of course, you're not going to have the same gameplay experience as something like an R9 290 or GTX 980, but we were playing AAA titles, and in my experience playing the games, they were definitely playable. And for $80, it's pretty amazing that you can get a AAA title into a playable state at all, and it's very impressive in my opinion. Now, Twitch-style gaming like Call of Duty and uh, sort of combat-oriented games, you might be losing more than you otherwise would if you had a faster GPU. Because, obviously, it's all about the split seconds in those types of games, but for s something like uh, SimCity, uh, more casual games, this is all that you need. This is going to get the job done, and that's really what we're looking for with an $80 chip. And down the road, you can throw in a dedicated card. You have the upgradability there as well so that you can sort of future-proof your machine a little bit. You're not necessarily capped to the performance that you can afford at the time. You can do worse for the money. Um, you can spend more money and do worse. For example, Intel's integrated graphics are not going to give you the same amount of performance for even more money in some cases. 
But uh, they, they are working on some interesting stuff in the future here. AMD's Kaviri uh, architecture, that offers some dramatic improvements as well. They've already rolled that out for the A10 series of APUs. You definitely want to have a look at the A10s. If these numbers are not what you were hoping for and you have a little bit more money, you can definitely step up to an A10 and make sure to go for Kaviri. Um, you can step down to an A6 processor. I made a video about the A6 6400K, I believe, or is it the 65? Hmm. <laughs> I'll link it right here, and you can check it out and love it and everything like that. So, bottom line, entry level. This is what we mean by entry level. This will get you gaming for 80 bucks. Very cool. Now, if you intend to throw a dedicated GPU in as soon as you buy it, if you're going to buy this chip and immediately stick a GPU in, maybe you're intending to run it in dual graphics mode and boost the performance of your GPU, don't do that because you're not getting a lot of performance for dollar there. Dual graphics is actually pretty buggy, and it's more of a headache than it's worth if you're intending to run a dedicated GPU right out of the gate. I would absolutely recommend that you skip over the APUs and step up directly to an FX series chip, which was designed specifically for that use case. Or if you have a budget which allows for it, you can step up to an Intel Core i5 or maybe an i7 or something like that. But, uh, yeah. $80, absolutely well spent. Thank you guys for checking out my review of the A10, the A8 6600K. I can remember for a split second after I read it off the box, if you thought that I was insane or uh, annoying, leave a comment. Hit the thumbs down button. Hit the thumbs up button. Watch all the ads. 57 times and make sure to check out my other videos that really helps a lot and thank you again i'm rambling now 